Hi, welcome to the Iowa SBDC and Smart Start course. In lesson six, we are covering arranging financing for your business. So we'll cover what exactly when you need financing, what banks and investors are going to look for and what to expect. Um, and then we're gonna talk about various sources of financing. So what bankers and investors look for, they're always gonna look at your personal credit and credit score. So that is something to be very aware of, whether you know you want to start a business now or later or maybe 10 years from now. Just like it affects our lives in so many ways, that personal credit score is going to affect getting even a business loan. Even if you're existing business and you're getting a loan, they're going to look back on your personal credit because you're the one responsible for that business and paying bills. You want to be and this is not a great credit score, but you will not be able to be financed if you are below 600. Ideally, you want to be above 700. So working on that, working, lenders have a lot of different programs that they will work with you. Um, there's programs in the internet sites like Credit Karma that um, you can get on and they will give you advice and give you steps to get that up. Equity, so when you're getting a business, loan everyone kind of calls it they, they kind of lump it in with a mortgage and they call it a down payment like how much of a down payment i'm going to pay really what it is is equity so it's your portion so your portion of of financing that startup cost so when you put together that cash flow and those startup costs um that whole startup you know so whether you paid for it yourself or you bought that piece of equipment or you're going to cover the working capital, you want to look at that whole number as your startup cost. And then the equity that you're putting in is what a bank looks for. It's not necessarily a down payment. You're not coming there and giving them a check. It's just if I have 200000 they might, you know, startup cost, they might ask for my portion of it being 20000 That portion might be buying the stove. It might be providing the working capital that I need to have to begin the business. So it's not necessarily handing it over, but it's just having a portion of that, and that's called equity. Expect that you will not be 100% financed, especially by a lender, um, and expect between 15 and 30%. In some areas, there are revolving loan funds, and I'll talk a little bit about that, that might lower that down to 10. 10 is the lowest I've seen. There are some you know, different programs in different areas that might go down to zero or they might partner with the bank. But for the most part, 98% of the time, I would look at at least 15 to 30% of the total financing amount needing to come for you. So, so that's something you know, to start thinking about where, you know, how you can save that money or where you can get that from. The next thing is collateral. So collateral is basically if you, pers you know, if you personally or through the business own property, land, um, and other large equipment, um, they will look for that. It's not necessarily a deal killer if you um, don't have equity in your house or something like that. The thing is, though, if you do have it, especially with bank lending, they will ask for it. So. Starting a business is really risky, and getting financing is really risky. And I a lot of times have people say to me, you know, I want to start this business, but I'm not going to put a lien on my house. I just won't do it. And if you're going to look for financing and you have equity in your home, they are going to ask you for it. So it's one of those things that you need to look at and, you know, see how important it is for you to start a business. It's a risk, and that's part of the risk. Um, so collateral and then of course the business plan and related experience so really doing your planning and getting that down into your business plan and then you know a resume or talking about how you know you're you're applying for a job basically so how you you know what's your experience and how are you going to make this run so the last thing that you want to attach to that business plan is your detailed cash flow um, they really need to see the research that you did on the numbers and how they work and then like we talked about in creating that cash flow and projection is they'll want to see a critical assumption attached to that so that they can see how you either guessed or 
educated guests, all of those numbers. They're all kind of assumptions that you're making, and so you're sharing those assumptions with bankers. So the last thing um, in the series is, is talking about sources of financing. So the first source of financing is what we call FFF, or Friends, Family, and Fools. A lot of times that is what is used to help start a, you know, bootstrap a business. Asking mom, asking friends, um, could be, you know, a gift or it could be in a sense of a loan. Usually what you want to do there, especially if you're just starting out and it's not a business that's going to be, you know, a million dollar revenue business in the first year or 15 million, you probably don't want to sell them equity on that. So what you're doing is asking to borrow money for them and maybe, you know, treating them kind of like a, a bank and just saying, I'll pay you back on my honor, 7% or 5% or 2% interest um, to get that paid back. But that's probably one of the most popular ways to kind of start out, whether it's you know money under your mattress that you already have or friends that want to be a part of it or really want to see your business grow or really want to see that business in the community grow. They will um, help you with the startup costs through kind of a FFF, Friends, Family, and Fools loan. Second one is commercial bank loans. So that's the most obvious one. So just going to the banker with that package that we can help you put together, the, the business plan and the projections. Um, one way to make commercial bank loans easier to finance startups is to use an SBA loan. So an SBA loan is a guarantee. It's not, you don't go to SBA and get a loan. Um, you will go to your commercial bank and if they offer SBA loans, it allows them to, to get a little bit more risky. Um, you know, you don't have any collateral, so, but they still can do it because they're gonna get a guarantee from SBA. So in order to do an SBA loan, you will still go to your community bank and um, they will just do an SBA loan because it makes it easier for them to finance you. There are also, in the state of Iowa, a lot of local and state programs that help finance your business. We have revolving loan funds or different economic development programs that pop up to help small businesses in different areas and industries. So looking at those, you really just want to reach out to your chambers, economic development programs, um, as well, of course, um, as your SBDC director. Um, I, I know the programs in my southwest Iowa area. Um, as do all of the other directors know, know their um, the local programs and the ins and outs of them. So contacting your SBDC director is, is a really great place to start. There's also angels and venture capitalists. So that's investing and that's where Shark Tank comes in and you know, you're looking at what percentage they'll take for the company. So generally, you're not going to look at angel and venture capitalists unless it's a very interesting situation where there's you know, potential of a lot of income right away. In the seed financing, usually in the very start of starting a business, um, you just don't have enough revenue to give away. I mean, if you're going to make 100000 or 200000 in a year and you're giving away 10% because someone you know, gave you um, an investment, it just doesn't make sense. So usually they're coming into innovative companies that have the potential of getting past that million dollar mark of revenue. Um, and it's usually at a stage where the business has proved themselves marketable. So they're selling it online or they have a small market share and at that point they need to beef up, get employees and, and put a lot of money in and that's when angel and venture capitalists come in. So as a local small business, if that's what you're doing, your best place to find investors is in that FFF category, in friends of the community or friends and mentors that you have in the community that would come in at a percentage of the loan, just like a, just like a bank would. So the last thing I want to talk about is grants. Uh, and let me just, because this is probably the last note that we have in this class, to disappoint you all, there really aren't any grants. There are grants through the federal government to help our economic development and to help small businesses grow and thrive. Those grants aren't usually given to 
the coffee shop or the local business. It's given to local economic development driven nonprofits that can take that money and put it into their community to help grow the economy. So a lot of times it's economic development, the small business development centers. Um, so a lot of those grants are there just so that you have programs to help you get started or there might be a revolving loan funds. If there are grants, they're going to be very, very local or they're going to be very, very industry specific. So that's where as a small business, I would look, look to your chambers, look to your economic development directors or your SBDC um, to see if there's any local programs. Usually local and industry programs are going to be more of a loan that has very, very good um, terms to it. But again, just staying connected to your local community to find out what different programs come. If grants come, they will go really fast because the, the concept of a grant is they're giving you money and you don't have to pay it back. And so we all know that money doesn't grow on trees, so there's never going to be a funnel of that grant being replenished. So usually if a grant comes, it's for a very specific reason. Like we're going to do a grant so that we can make our downtown look better and the businesses and the business or the building owners can buy into that, you know, and, and that's a way that we can get great signs and paint and new brick and all that kind of stuff and have the business building owners participate in that. But that grant won't be along around long. Once that money's gone, it's gone. And hopefully the end result is that they have a beautiful downtown. So that's kind of how grants work. Again, you can contact us. Um, to look at it. There are some great programs in the state of Iowa to help you start a business and we are there to help you with that. Um, so again, we're the Small Business Development Centers of Iowa. We have 15 centers. Um, please go to iowasbdc.org um, to get any further information on any of this and work with your local regional SBDC director. We are no cost and you can set up an online appoint or a appointment with us and at this time through at least the end of the year of 2020, um, we will be doing virtual calls. We are very well, we've learned a lot since March of 2020. Um, so we're very good at virtual calls and can share all the templates and help you do everything that we have done one-on-one. -on -one. So don't hesitate to, to contact us and reach out.